He-Man the Mannequin, you asked. I'm really interested in your take on Maurice. I think she works pretty well as a heel, and I don't think she's that bad of a wrestler, especially because she came from the Diva Search. Um, my take on Maurice, uh, I think Maurice is a decent heel character. I mean, she, she's basically the fourth member of the Beautiful People, but she does play that stuck-up, arrogant princess role pretty well. Um, I do think she has some charisma. Um, her English has gotten better, but as a wrestler, she's really not very good. Um, probably the best thing you can say about her wrestling is that she's able to work competently up to a point. But she's not great by any means, not even close. Um, I mean, she, ne she never really had any standout matches that made you jump out of your seat and go, Wow, that was impressive, you know? I mean, she's, she never had a match like that. And I think with uh, the recent trade of some new divas to the Raw brand, uh, Gail Kim and Alicia Fox, who I think has potential, uh, it's, it's starting to become a lot more noticeable now just how limited Maurice is in the ring. Um, she had that tag match uh, with Fox and Gail and Mickey James, I think it was last Monday, um, and, and it was it was plain as day just how wide the gap was in, in terms of skill level because Gail and Mickey just completely embarrassed her. I mean, go back go back and watch that match. I mean, it couldn't be more obvious. Uh, basically, Maurice is is one of those paper divas like Kelly Kelly and the Bella Twins. You know, those those women that Vince loves because they look great on the covers of magazines, but they're models. They're not real wrestlers. WWE tries to cover this up by booking around their weaknesses and making them appear as if they're better than they actually are. But I'm telling you, you've been a victim of the WWE marketing machine if you've ever been a Maurice fan. Thanks for your question. you were wondering why I was trying to asphyxiate myself with this pillow here. Well, it's very simple. On this week's Impact, Booker T joined the commentary table during Beer Money's match with the Motor City Machine Guns. And Booker T's commentary was so goddamn annoying, it made me want to kill myself and take others with me. TNA, for the love of all that is good and pure in this world, please, 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 keep Booker T as far away from a microphone as humanly possible from this point forward. Please, I'm, 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 I'm begging you. <clears throat> That's all I've got to say about that. But as long as I'm discussing the bad parts of this show, I need to get something off of my chest. Sting is a piece of shit. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about Sting the person. I'm not talking about Sting the man or Sting the wrestler. I'm talking about Sting the character. Sting, the on-screen character that we see on Impact every week. That Sting is a piece of shit. And here's why. He steps onto his soapbox and spews out this whole huge diatribe about how Samoa Joe is the reason why wrestling is as bad as it is right now, why TNA is as bad as it is right now, because Joe wants everything handed to him without working for it. And it was literally like I wanted to reach into the TV screen wrap my hands around Sting's throat, and strangle him to death. Okay, Sting has been a broken record going on with this holier-than-thou bullshit for months and months, and that's exactly what it is. It's a bunch of bullshit. Samoa Joe is the guy who works house shows. Samoa Joe is the guy who worked Slammiversary with broken fingers and a torn tricep. Samoa Joe is the guy who worked his way from the bottom up in TNA to get to where he is now. Sting is the guy with the first-class plane tickets. Sting is the guy who works four days a month. Sting is the guy with the fat paycheck. Sting is the guy who never works live events. And Sting is the guy who gets handed the main event of Bound for Glory on a silver platter every goddamn year despite doing absolutely nothing to deserve it. Great segment, but it really made me want to see Sting get his ass kicked. Okay, crap like this is exactly why I keep saying that Sting's character is the biggest hypocrite on earth. And I can't wait. I cannot wait to see Samoa Joe absolutely decimate Sting at Victory Road. And that damn well better be what happens, too. The last two times these guys had a match, Joe basically tore Sting a new asshole. And if that's not what happens this time, then, just, then stick a fork in me, because I'll be done. What I want to see happen with Sting right now is for AJ Styles to get right in his face and say, Sting, you're a fraud. 
you're a fraud and you're a hypocrite. If you think that Samoa Joe is responsible for everything that's wrong with this company, then you need to take a good long look in a mirror. This whole thing was your fault to begin with, Sting. All this crap with the main event mafia started with you. Because you couldn't descend from your golden pedestal long enough to realize that just because you thought a couple people disrespected you once or twice, that didn't give you the right to declare war on everybody under the age of 35. You said that we got to this point the moment I spit in your face. Well, congratulations, Sting. You got what you wanted. Because after everything you've done in the last year, after everything you've been responsible for, I wouldn't spit on you if you were on fire. So why don't you do everyone a favor and just go home. Go home, get the hell out of TNA, and let the originals clean up the mess that you created. If they could have AJ Styles do that, that would just be the, the greatest thing ever. <clears throat> Next was my favorite TNA gimmick match in the whole wide world. The random, pointless, completely unhyped, two-minute ladder match! What do you want me to say? I got nothing. There is nothing left to say. I hate these ladder matches. I, I, I literally physically hate them. So I'm not going to say anything about the match because it's only going to make me want to go for that pillow again. But I will reiterate my point on what a retarded situation this was. Doug Williams has been putting the briefcase he stole from Homicide up for grabs in matches. But the only way he could ever do that in the first place is if, is if TNA management recognized his ownership of the briefcase. And TNA management isn't going to do that. He stole the fucking thing. So, this whole situation is completely asinine, but it's over now, thank God. Homicide got the briefcase back, so let's just put this crap behind us. Also this week, we had Tara uh, beat Velvet Sky in a match and then threatened to put that spider on her again, if, unless Angelina gave her a title shot immediately. Uh, for the record, I think spiders are the most disgusting, vile, repulsive creatures on Earth. So you can just imagine how much I love this gimmick. <sighs> anyway, uh, Angelina gave her the title shot. Uh, the match lasted about four minutes, and Tara won the Knockouts Championship. Uh, really? Don't agree with that. Uh, first of all, uh, was, was there something horribly wrong with building up anticipation for this match and then doing it next week? Or, God forbid, at Victory Road? Apparently there was. Um, plus, you guys know my thoughts on Angelina. It was, it was too soon to take the belt off her, and also too soon to give it to Tara. Um, I, I, think, I think Tara is starting to get over the way she needs to be, but to be honest, I, I haven't been that impressed with her yet. I mean, she hasn't been bad necessarily. I mean, she had, she had a good match with Madison Rain last month, and a good match with uh, Awesome Kong and the Beautiful People last week. Uh, her two matches with Angelina have been disappointing. Now, that, that, might not be, that might not have been her fault. Those two matches only got about nine minutes between them, which is less time than each of them should have gotten individually. And the Slammiversary match was full of interference, which basically killed it for me. But I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting to be really impressed by her, and I haven't been impressed yet. Now, I, I am expecting good things from her match with Awesome Kong at Bound for Glory, which we all know is going to happen. Uh, in the meantime, get Tara out of this feud with the beautiful people and pu put her in there with Taylor. Put her in there with Sarah Stock, with Melissa, Ayako Hamada, those women who can really tear it up. And speaking of the women, I guess I have to mention this. Uh, this thing with Charmel and Jenna Maraska has gained a new wrinkle. Uh, Maraska has apparently hired Awesome Kong and Raisha Saeed to train her for her encounter with Charmel, which I, I think makes Maraska the babyface in this feud. Um, so... Uh, they do have some actual good wrestlers involved with this thing now, finally. Um, it's still absolute crap. It's, it's still a complete waste of money. But at least now there's a chance that at Victory Road we might see Kong awesome bomb the living piss out of Charmel. And that's... That's... That's something. Um, check out UFC 100 in just a few hours. Uh, my prediction for the main event, Brock Lesnar by TKO in round two. Later.